Assalamu alaikum. I hope that you are all fine. I am Asfia Shahid from SLS Montessori and High School. In this video, we are going to study chapter 1, Cells, Tissues and Organs, which is on page number 2. Students, I would like you all to please open page number 2 of your books. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to understand that living things are made up of cells, recognize the structure of cell, differentiate between plant and animal cells, understand the concept of specialist cells, understand the difference between unicellular and multicellular organisms. Let's begin with our topic. Before moving into the details, let's first talk about living things. The question here is, how can we differentiate living things from non-living things? In the diagram here, there are birds, animals, plants and human and we can call them living things whereas table, chair and a bed are known as non-living things. So, in order to differentiate between living and non-living things, we are going to study few characteristics by which living things are different from non-living things. So, the first characteristic is growth. It is basically a process of increasing in size. For example, a small plant will eventually grow into a huge tree, whereas a cute little kitten will become a cat after a certain time. So, this is growth. Second one is respiration. The chemical reaction that takes place in the cell to produce energy is called respiration. This energy is utilized by the cells to perform different functions. Nutrition is basically a process of providing or obtaining food which is important for their health and growth. In simple words, eating food which contains balanced amount of carbohydrates, fats, vitamins etc. for growth. As the name tells us that movement is basically a process in which living things can move around from one place to another. Now the question arises, how do plants move? Well, plants do move, but they need to move in order to grow, catch sunlight and for some to feed. For instance, shoots grow, leaves turn towards the sunlight. If a plant has the flowers, they open and close. So these are the movements shown by plants. Excretion is a process in which all living things eliminate or expel waste matter from their bodies. For example, the remains of undigested food that living things eat is turned into a solid waste for excretion and carbon dioxide is removed by the process of breathing. Reproduction is the process in which an organism multiplies itself to produce copies of itself. Sensitivity is an ability of an organism or organ to respond or behave to the external environment. For example, if it is too hot outside, your body will start sweating in order to maintain the body's internal temperature. Now, we will discuss about cells. All organisms, plants and animals are made up of tiny units called cells. Cells are basically very small units that you cannot see with your naked eye. They are building blocks of all living organisms. Cells basically act like bricks to build up the entire organism. As large number of bricks join to form a building, the number of same and different cells combine together to form body of the living organism. Different cells perform different tasks although they have multiple features in common. Let's talk about the features of the cell. There are multiple structures that are common among most of the cells. First one is cell membrane. It acts as a boundary to protect the structures present inside the cell. Second feature is known as cytoplasm which is a jelly-like colorless substance. Third one is nucleus which is also known as brain of the cell. You can also refer the diagram to understand the location of these structures. The outline or boundary is the cell membrane. Nucleus is present in the center of the cell whereas cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance. It is colorless but just for your understanding here the cytoplasm is shown in gray color. Now we will discuss these three basic features of cell in detail. Let's begin with cell membrane. 
Cell membrane is the outer boundary of the cell. The function of cell membrane is to control which material goes into the cell and what is required to be released from the cell. It acts like a security guard. It is like a bowl which can hold everything inside it. You can see the cell membrane in the diagram. As I told you earlier, the cytoplasm is a jelly-like colorless substance which holds number of small structures called organelles. Organelles are very tiny structures that perform their own functions. For example, mitochondria are an organelles known as powerhouse of the cell because they produce energy for the cell and ribosomes make proteins. Chemical reactions also take place in the cytoplasm. Chemical reaction is a process in which two things combine or react together to produce a new thing. Nucleus is known as brain or the control center of the cell as it controls almost every activity within the cell or done by the cell. Nucleus contains the substance called DNA. It stores information in the form of DNA. DNA is a short form of deoxyribonucleic acid. It is the material that carries all the information about how a living thing will look and function. For instance, DNA in human determines such things as what color the eyes are and how the lungs work of an individual. Each piece of information is carried on a different section of the DNA. These sections are called genes. For example, some of you have hair color similar to your mother and some people have eye color just like their fathers. So this kind of information is present on genes. Nucleus controls kind of chemicals that a cell make and how much of each of them is produces. Nucleus also controls when and how the cell divides. A plant or an animal cell cannot reproduce without a nucleus. For example, we need our brain to work properly. Likewise, the cell needs a nucleus to function properly. Therefore, each cell must have a nucleus for reproduction. Without it, cell division will not occur because whenever the cell divides, nucleus of the cell divides first as it contains the information for the construction of other parts of the cell. There are many different types of cell. Here, we are going to discuss two main categories of cell, which are plant cell and animal cell. Structures of both cells are shown on the diagram on your screen. Let's start with the structure of plant cell. There are some features in plant cell that are somehow not present in animal cell. Let's discuss about the parts of plant cell. Plant cells have a cell wall, which is the outer boundary of plant cell. It is made up of a substance called cellulose. It allows the plant to stay rigid and hard. Plant cells contain a large vacuole in the center of cytoplasm which looks like a bag as you all can see in the diagram. This vacuole contains a solution of sugars and salt. This mixture is known as sap. Cell sap in the vacuole pushes the cytoplasm against the cell wall in order to keep the cell rigid and in shape. Plant cells also contain another highly important organelle known as chloroplast. Chloroplast contains a green pigment called chlorophyll which is used by plants in a process of photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, plants make their own food by using sunlight. It is important to remember that unlike many animals, plants do not have a skeleton. They keep their shape because of the cell wall and cell sap present in vacuoles to keep the cells rigid. Let's move on to the structure of animal cell. Animal cell has cell membrane which acts as a boundary wall to protect cells internal environment from the outer environment. This membrane holds the internal structures of cell in a specified area just like a jelly in a bowl. There is cytoplasm present inside animal cell which once again is a jelly-like colorless substance holding organelles. Animal cells have nucleus which is the control center of the cell. As I have explained earlier, it controls the activities of the cell. Animal cell has vacuoles, but these vacuoles are small and their lifespan is very short because these vacuoles collect waste material from the cell and expel it out through cell membrane. Let's compare the structure of plant and animal cells. For comparison, we must draw two separate columns with the help of straight line drawn in the center. 
the first thing that we are going to compare in plant and animal cell is cell wall it is the outermost layer in plant cell so it is present in plant cell and absent in an animal cell cell membrane is the second layer present in plant cell next to cell wall whereas it is the outermost layer present in an animal cell third thing that we are going to compare is cytoplasm it is the common feature of both plant cell and animal cell next one is nucleus this is the brain of cell so it is present in plant cell as well as in animal cell plant cell has a large central vacuole and animal cell has many smaller vacuoles chloroplast is present in plant cell whereas absent in animal cell in this diagram the structures of animal and plant cell are compared in a very simple way as you can see they both have nucleus cytoplasm and cell membrane whereas plant cell has some additional organelles such as chloroplast large and visible vacuole and cell wall although all plants and animal cells have the same basic structures in their own way many of them are adapted to carry out complicated tasks within their bodies we call them specialist cells as the name defines these are special cells plants have palisade and root hair cells whereas animals contain red blood cells nerve cells and ciliated epithelial cells let's discuss them in detail palisade cells are plants specialist cells which are found on the top surface of leaves as they have a lot of chloroplasts in them they can easily trap sunlight in order to perform photosynthesis which i mentioned earlier is the process of making food root hair cells do not have chloroplasts as they do not need chlorophyll which is actually a green pigment required for photosynthesis root hair cells are mostly found underground they are very long and thin providing large surface area to cover so that these cells can draw extra amount of water salts and minerals from the soil now we will discuss about some specialist cells present in animals by starting with red blood cells these cells don't have nucleus red blood cells are of biconcave in shape in order to provide large surface area for absorbing oxygen Biconcave means two concave lenses joined together as shown in diagram. You can also understand the concept of biconcave by joining two spoons heads back to back. It will give you almost the same shape as you can see in the diagram. Red blood cells contain a protein called hemoglobin which combines with the oxygen. The main function of red blood cell is to provide oxygen to all parts of the body. Nerve cells are also called neurons and are the active part of the nervous system. These cells are up to 1 meter long and thin. Neurons communicate with each other as well as with the other cells through electrical signals. As you can see in the diagram below, it has two ends. One end is connected to the brain whereas the other end is attached to other parts of the body to send and receive messages. Nerve cell has some other parts as well which includes motor end plate node of ranvier axon myelin sheath cell body dendrite and nucleus ciliated epithelial cells have tiny hair like structures called cilia on the top surface these cells are found in windpipe through which we can breathe nose and oviduct these cells clean the dust particles and microorganisms from the location where they are found Ciliated epithelial cells move the eggs from ovaries to uterus with a tube called oviduct. Any living thing that can live on its own is called an organism. On the basis of number of cells, organisms can be classified as unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. The organisms which are made up of one cell are called unicellular organisms. as the name defines uni means one only one cell makes up the entire body and controls it for example microorganisms some very simple plants and animals including a single celled animal amoeba and a single celled plant 
chlorella although amoeba doesn't look like an animal but it has more functions in common with animals rather than plants the organisms which are made up of two or more cells are called as multicellular organisms the examples of multicellular organisms includes humans plants and animals this information can help you in preparing your objective section red blood cell is only 0.007 mm across x cell or ova measures 0.2 mm across about the size of a full stop which is the largest cell in the human body brain cells are the smallest cells in the body which measures only 0.005 mm in the next session we will study about tissues I want you all to give page number 5 a good reading so that it will be easy for you to understand the lecture. I hope you have understood the lecture well. Thank you for listening.